Alright man, sorry about the wait there. My computer was being all crazy. But as of right now, so I'm gonna kinda just explain everything to you and then you won't be free to go at the moment because we, uh, we're working on other stuff. I don't know if he's, how much he's told you about what's going on or anything. He like told that. me nothing. Okay, cool. So based on everything that like I'm detecting and stuff and your, your history and everything else, I That's not have, probable cause or, or but, reasonable suspicion. So I, I have a canine coming out. Welcome back to Legal Descent, where we evaluate your constitutional rights before they're taken away. Thank you so much for joining us, and as always, if you enjoy our content, please do consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and interacting with us in the comments below. It really does help us out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. A few days ago, on May 9th, 2022, Acura Amanda uploaded a video from YouTube user Brett Keeney. Both of their channels and the original channel are linked in the description below. According to the description, Brett lives in Lincoln, North Dakota, and was pulled over. About 10 minutes after being stopped, an officer asked to search his car, and Brett refused. According to Brett's statement, it was after this request that he began recording. And thanks for your patience. Her computer is just the reason up and we're getting this done as fast as possible. Thanks for your patience. Hey, y'all on some bullshit now, dude. Come on. You got 20, your 20 minutes is over. What's up? Your 20 minutes for probable cause is over. Come on, what's up? Our, our computer's freezing up. We can't control the technology. It's Come on, man. Come on, man. Are you doing this so you can search a car? You want to search I'm a car that bad? Huh? I'm just letting you know what's going on, sir. Okay. Lots of people have the understanding that police have a 20 minute time window to conduct a traffic stop. And that's not necessarily true. Depending on the circumstances surrounding the stop, officers may have more or less time to find reasonable articulable suspicion of criminal activity or the stop becomes an unreasonable seizure. The current judicial precedent always begins with the Fourth Amendment's protection from unreasonable searches and seizures. The landmark case interpreting this protection is Terry v. Ohio, which grants officers the ability to stop and detain individuals as long as they're able to point to specific and articulable facts that create an inference of a likelihood that criminal activity is being conducted. We discover later in this case that Mr. Keeney has been stopped for allegedly failing to use a turn signal. That is a traffic violation and a valid reason for a stop and a citation. However, in Illinois v. Cabalas, the United States Supreme Court held that a seizure that is justified solely by the interest in issuing a warning ticket to the driver can become unlawful if it is prolonged beyond the time reasonably required to complete that mission. The court further held that a dog sniff by itself does not infringe upon a person's constitutionally protected interest in privacy as long as the officer has not improperly extended the duration of the traffic stop to enable the dog sniff to occur. In 2015, the Supreme Court revisited this issue in Rodriguez v. United States and held that a police stop exceeding the time needed to handle the matter for which the stop was made violates the Constitution's shield against unreasonable seizures. In Rodriguez, an officer saw a car swerve onto the shoulder and then back onto the road. When asked why he had driven onto the shoulder, Rodriguez replied to the officer that he had swerved to avoid a pothole. The officer then got the driver's information and ran his record. The officer came back to the car and asked for the passenger's information. He received it and then ran the passenger's record. He came back a third time and finally wrote the warning for driving on the shoulder to Rodriguez. After all of this, the officer asked Rodriguez if he could walk his dog around the car. Rodriguez refused, and that's when the officer instructed him to get out and wait for the second officer to arrive. Eventually, the dog alerted, they searched the car, and they found contraband. Now pay attention, because this is where a lot of people get confused the court begins deliberating on the seven to eight minute wait. However, this is not from the beginning of the stop, but the extension of the stop from when the officer finished writing the warning for the original traffic violation. 
how long it took him to get the passenger's information, the driver's information, and going back and forth three times between the squad car and Rodriguez's car was never an issue. According to the court, an officer's mission, in addition to issuing a traffic ticket, includes ordinary inquiries incident to the stop, typically involving checking their license, determining if the driver has warrants, and inspecting the automobile's registration and proof of insurance. Conducting a dog sniff is not part of a normal traffic stop, and if it prolongs the detainment by any amount of time beyond what it takes to expeditiously perform the original reason for the stop, absent of independent articulable suspicion, it is no longer a valid detainment. Therefore, any extension of the stop to conduct a dog sniff would be an unreasonable seizure. However, there is no bright line rule established on how long an officer has to conduct normal traffic stop duties. Only if the officer intentionally prolongs the stop does it become invalid. In this case, the officer's computer has allegedly frozen. Technology doesn't always work, and it's reasonable to assume that periodically, even the police experience disruption to their computer systems. While I do not particularly buy their excuse, and in my opinion, it's most likely a delaying tactic. Most courts would probably not see this as an unlawful extension of the traffic stop, but it would be based on the totality of the circumstances in the case. A good defense attorney would request records of how many times the computer has frozen in the past and how many officers this allegedly affects. Alright man, sorry about the wait there. My computer was being all crazy. But as of right now, so I'm gonna kinda just explain everything to you and then you won't be free to go at the moment because we, uh, we're working on other stuff. I don't know if he's how much he's told you about what, what's going on or anything. He like told that. me nothing. Okay, cool. So I'll give you these two things. No, it's not cool. What's up? Oh, well, here you go. Take that back for you. Okay. So I'll explain this, and then I'll explain the rest that's going on, okay? So first thing here <laughs> is neglected turn signal, right? So it's just a written warning. No, no, uh, no point. Uh, it's not like a citation, okay? So then the next one is failure to display your temp registration like we, are, we talked about as well. Um, that one's just a written warning as well. I did have to give you the citation for the um of course insurance you did. right away of course you did but just listen to me i don't care so, i don't care well no just let me explain this because you don't you won't have to pay this because he said he well after it was already in the process of getting it done i can't take it back once i already start it so if you just print out those copies and bring them to the office they'll void the whole citation out for you but you got to do that within 10 days okay so you won't be you, you won't have to pay this at all right so that, what's right? up all right so based on everything that like i'm detecting and stuff and your your history and everything else I That's not have, probable cause or, or well, reasonable suspicion. So I have, I have a canine coming out. You can okay. buy, you can search the car. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to go through all that. You can search the car. Okay. This is the absolute worst thing he could have possibly said. At this point in time, the original reason for the stop has been completed. The warning for the failure to use his signal has been issued and the stop is now over. That being said, the officer claims that based on everything that she is detecting and the driver's past history, she has a canine coming out to search the car. Reasonable articulable suspicion is a relatively low standard. It requires more than a hunch, but less than a preponderance of the evidence or probable cause. It does not require a detaining officer to be perfect, but merely reasonable. In most states across the country, including North Dakota, a person's criminal history can support a finding of reasonable suspicion. However, if that is the only reason, then it is not enough. All that to say, every argument and every right is thrown out the window as soon as he grants them permission to search and voluntarily gives them access to his car. The officers take the next several minutes to search the vehicle and appear to not find anything of note. Yeah, there's 
I also asked for counterfeit money. But Your car. Would you let me do that? Right, well, I stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a violation. I feel violated. I'm a, I mean, I'm a citizen of the United States. I got, I have, I have rights, inalienable rights. Hey, thanks for the citations while you violated me. It seems like Mr. Keeney has given a citation and is now free to go. There is never any reason to give law enforcement permission to search your car. You don't win some kind of good citizen award badge and it can only lead to negative consequences. We have witnessed officers in the past actually plant drugs in cars and frame innocent people for crimes they have never committed. If he had not given them permission to search, I believe he had a pretty good case to avoid any kind of search because the traffic stop ended as soon as he was handed the citation. Any further delay to wait for the K-9 would have been an unreasonable seizure. What do you think? Is there ever a reason to grant police the ability to search your car or your home? Should there be a bright line rule quantifying how long a traffic stop should take? Let us know in the comments below. And remember that no matter who you are, you have value and you have rights. Do not be afraid to use them, and we'll see you next time right here on Legal Descent.